I'm Mary Sonic, and I want to welcome you to our video series on lead user methods. In lead user studies, interviewing is the primary method used to gather information about the marketplace. Teams do both telephone and in-person interviews. However, most of them are by telephone because it is a quick and cost-effective way to gather information. In this video, lead user team coach Joan Churchill gives you a number of pointers for conducting interviews with lead users and experts. First, Joan highlights important features of the type of interviewing you'll be doing and introduces you to key interviewing techniques. Then she walks you through the homework that you should do prior to starting an interview. I think you'll find that these interviewing techniques will put you on the path to a successful lead user study. Lead user team members conduct what are called semi-structured interviews. They're very different from customer surveys designed to get normative data on market needs. Let's start with a few key principles of semi-structured interviewing, what you want to accomplish, what the interviewing process looks like. Now, as you know, the overall purpose of interviewing lead users and experts is to acquire new and really leading-edge information, the kind that goes beyond what you'll find in written material. What you're looking for then is intuitive insights, novel angles they may have on a subject. Now what this means is that you can't use a standardized questionnaire because scripted questions like these are going to prevent you from creating a free-flowing discussion. Now at the same time, the interviewer does need to direct the content of the discussion to some extent. So before each interview, team members plan a few key interview questions but they're used only as a guide as opposed to a rigid script. The experience of a team member in a sanding product study illustrates the spirit of semi-structured interviewing. In this study, members sought out leading edge experts to learn their ideas on novel sanding tools to safely remove lead-based paint from wood surfaces. Eventually, a team member interviewed Brian Powell, a lead user who specialized in restoring valuable antiques and historical buildings. Early in the discussion, it came out that Mr. Powell thought sanding was a very poor method of removing lead-based paint because of the dangerous dust it created. His idea, instead, why doesn't your company come up with some kind of very sticky tape that would peel the paint off without creating all the hazardous dust? The interviewer recognized the seeds of an innovation opportunity, so he put aside his pre-planned sanding questions and asked Mr. Powell to elaborate on his idea. Good interviewers listen carefully for unexpected nuggets like this. Then they follow up with questions they design on the spot. That's really the essence of this type of interviewing. Now a closer look at the techniques you should have in your interviewing toolkit. The major interviewing challenge you face is moving past those surface responses to a discussion that has some real substance to it. In terms of directing the interview, it's useful to picture moving down a ladder of abstraction. You start by asking a general open-ended type of question, one that's going to give you a sense of the person's overall knowledge and perspective. From there you pick up on issues of interest to you and then probe for the details of the person's thinking. Why do you think X? Walk me through an example. Here the goal is to get concrete information and explore the person's thinking from several different angles. Charlie Callisto, team member in a commercial graphics lead user study, gives a flavor of what it looks like to move the interview down the ladder of abstraction. He's doing a practice interview with Dan Pohl, commercial graphics lab manager and team leader. Dan is role-playing an owner of a company that specializes in applying large format graphics on commercial fleets, such as semi-trailers. The purpose of this interview is to explore with you the possibility of new techniques, new tools in the graphic installation to make it easier and faster for installers to apply graphics. That sounds great. Good. Why don't we get started? I'd like to understand your viewpoint of the current state of the art in graphic installation. The tools, the problems, the concerns people have as you observe it. Well, I think the, the current state of the art is, is uh, archaic. Uh, the techniques and tools. Charlie knows that reducing the time of graphic application is a major problem the team needs to solve. So he probes Dan's thinking on the subject. 53-foot trailer. 
Two-man crew, how long would it take to apply a graphic? Oh, I think that depends on lots of different factors. For instance, uh, if the trailer is a flat trailer, uh, it's going to go faster because you don't have to deal with the, the rivets and the time that's associated with them. Charlie's next question is aimed at getting a more precise understanding of which application tasks are more problematic. Could you break down for me the process and time? I, I understand that there is the setup, there is, uh, I think it's called squeegee time, and rivet time, and, and, and breakdown. G give me a, a sense of how much time it takes for, for each process. I guess I haven't really thought of it in those terms before, but uh, I can approximate. I would say that probably 80% of the time is spent on the, on the two main tasks, and that's uh, squeegeeing the flat areas of the trailer, getting the film down in those areas, and then conforming the film around the rivets. Probably about 50-50. A couple things to notice about what Charlie did. He starts with a general question aimed at finding out what Dan knows. From there, he quickly moves to questions designed to draw out specific and concrete information. Basically, effectively guiding the interview comes down to common sense questioning techniques, ones we automatically use when we're discussing a subject that's important to us. Suppose you're consulting with a friend who owns the kind of car you're thinking of buying. You would naturally quiz your friend for detailed information, what he likes about the car, how it handles, gas mileage, any hidden problems, and so forth. The point is, you want to do this kind of energetic questioning with every important interview topic. Coming up now, the homework you should do before each interview. Let's say now that you've identified a top expert you want to interview in some depth, what should you do to get ready? Well, first of all, you want to do some boning up on the subject and the background of the expert. For example, find out what you can about the person's area of specialty. Look over books or articles the person has authored. In other words, you want to know enough about the person's work so you can ask intelligent questions. Your next planning items First, think through your information goals and then design a few questions that you intend to explore. Susan Heestand, a top-notch interviewer and previous lead user team member, illustrates how she would approach this work. In this example, Susan is preparing for an interview with Dr. Mike Osterholm, former chief epidemiologist for the state of Minnesota. Let's say I'd like to learn about the state-of-the-art methods to diagnose contaminated milk products. The first big research question would be aimed at learning about current trends and practices. Notice that in addition to my lead-in question, I also plan a few follow-up questions to get at the specific type of content I'm searching for. My second major question would be designed to get his ideas on the future, especially future technology trends. Top experts like Dr. Osterholm are likely to have good intuition and good insight about where their industry is headed. So I always include this kind of question in my interview. What Susan has done is a good example of the type of guide you should develop for each interview. Notice that she hasn't boxed herself in with a detailed questionnaire, but she does know the general content she wants to cover. Now a final homework item, planning your opening remarks. My suggestion here is that you script these remarks especially in a telephone interview with someone you don't know, because you want to cover these areas in just a few concise remarks. The opening Susan designed for her telephone interview with Dr. Osterholm illustrates what you want to accomplish. She immediately mentions her affiliation with 3M, which gains her instant credibility. Then she concisely explains the purpose for the call and makes it clear she knows about his work, a quick rapport builder. Now Susan's introduction would take only a few seconds and that's very important because prominent experts like a Dr. Osterholm are very busy, they get a lot of interview requests. So you want to quickly give them a good reason to talk to you. In conclusion, you should do advanced planning in the areas Joan talked about so you get information that matters. From there, interview success depends on your ability to get a rich discussion going one that draws out the nuggets of information that lead users and experts have to offer. <laughs>